Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Oh, hey, everybody, how are you? Wait a minute, I'll turn on the uh, fan for you. Because I, I, I have my good wife over here who is uh, still going through menopause, I think. It never stops. But it never stops? No. Are you sure it never yeah. stops? What? You're premenopausal uh, or menopausal. Really? Yeah. Oh. It never stops. Oh, okay. L uh, turn your, I, I just want to see something. Just turn your whole body towards me and talk. Because I want to see what the sound is like if you're just, if you're sitting there. Jack is sitting Yeah, there. and you're sitting and talking. How's this? Yeah, don't talk into the mic. Just okay, talk to just, me directly. I'm talking to you directly. I'm just getting all yeah. caught up with these wires. I see. Okay, well, that'd, that'd be fine. Okay, now you can go back where you are. I'm, I'm testing something out here, folks. Is my is my problem? What's this? Just, the, 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 just don't don't play with stuff. It just fell off the table. Well, it's it's just a thing that falls. Uh, here, let me do this a little bit because we want to get you a little bit in the picture. No, there. we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. We, we want don't. them to see the whole T-shirt. See that? Okay. And. Yeah. I'm wearing the Friday night you, uh, gabinet. I'm wearing the same ones I wore last night. You got to get me new ones. These are getting frayed at the bottoms. So. Yeah, we'll just cut them and hem them. Probably. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you, you, are you good at that? Yeah. Yeah, right. I'll cut an inch and right. then make a hem You're for you. You're a sewing person. <laughs> hey, let, me do, let me go to the two shot. So anyway. Oh, so they didn't see my pajamas? What? They didn't see my pants? Oh, no, they didn't see your pants. Here, uh, hold, hold, just, here we are. I'm wearing, we I'm wearing the gabnet. These are the official, these are the gabnet pants. Can Everybody you see wears them? them. Yes. And I'm not wearing the official gabnet hat tonight, but, you know. It'll do. The tam o shanter or whatever. So you had the day off again? Oh, so nice. Did you ever work? I work. <laughs> I work very hard. She, you get almost you get any Friday off you've got an excuse for today. It was Good Friday, right? Well, the building closes. We use the holidays that the building uses, and well, it's yeah, a union. The, it's a union building. Yeah, but the building closes at noon. No, it, the building was closed today. Period. Oh, really? Yeah. But Hans went in later because uh, they called me because he set off the alarm. Oh, okay. But. So I know he went in. He was the only one in there. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. But he just got back from two weeks in Taiwan, so. You don't, they don't know who Hans is. My bo One of my bosses. Yeah. Great guy. Oh, boy, my, I'm, my eyes are burning. Here is we it, go. No, where's, is, it, where's the, is it allergy season again? Yeah, the, the pollen is out because my eyes boy, are just I just, crazy. I just, I, just it's, I go crazy with it, you know? I go crazy with it. Uh, but uh, I've been going crazy with just trying to. You've been going crazy with life. No, I've been. I've you been, hollered at me today. Well, you because here's what you do, Alex. Make dinner. It's five thirty. Wait a minute. <laughs> Six o'clock is dinner, and I'm in and and I was in the middle of a. a, a I had a three thousand dollar camera that had a battery jammed in it. I don't care. I was and making I, and I was trying to get it out without breaking the fucking camera. I was making jambalaya. Yeah, but I mean, so then you're going making in your hand. I'm going. It's not six o'clock yet. Leave me alone. And and you just you just such a nudge about this stuff. You're such you know? a pain in the ass. What? I'm not a pain in the you ass. You are too. No, I'm, all the time. I'm not a pain in the ass. Ah, uh, uh, Let's hear about your ailments what do you again. Mean? I don't have any ailments outside of my eyes hurting and the fact that I've got my feet are numb, and I uh, here we go. I have uh, what else do I have wrong? Uh, oh yeah, I have the uh, torn meniscus, which has been pretty good lately. I mean, you need something a, else to complain about. You know, but uh, torn meniscus is, well, a torn meniscus is not a small deal, you know. Uh, we're going to milk this one. I'm, I'm milking it for all I can, <laughs> like you milk that back of yours. Well, that's serious. Well, what do you think this is? What, maybe my numb feet could mean it's, it's foot cancer. 
A knee is not as, as important as a back. I have a funny feeling I'm going to be in a walker faster than you I are. I think you are already. Yeah. You walk around like this. No, no, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I'm I, I'm paying attention to my posture lately, and you're not even giving me credit You've for it. You've never paid attention I to pay, it. I've been paying attention to <laughs> you're it. You're not. You know. You know who's worse than me at that was Bruce Davis. Oh, I have a picture of the two of you walking down, and both of you are walking down. And I was like a lot this. younger. <laughs> About four years. No. Eight years. Yeah, about eight years. He's been dead, what, about three, four years, Has something he? like that already? Yeah. Yeah, you, you count your life by the people who've died. Um, and it's speeding up. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, so we just spent uh, today watching the Netflix series on Trump, which is really Very good. Very good. It's really good. See what an asshole he is. Well, I mean, it's his life. But it doesn't, it doesn't start out by going, and then he was born here, and then he grew up there, and so on. It starts out when he first comes to New York to start building. As a young adult. And really, it, it's not trying to take a position particularly. They have people on who do like him, but overall, he comes across as a pretty big asshole. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a, a terrible one, as a matter of fact. So, you know. Well, that's all I have to talk about. Thanks that's for, it. Thanks I'm, for being here. Okay, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, I went to the gym. Yeah. And then I made jambalaya, which we'll have on Sunday, I now, think. Now, here's what happened. This is jambalaya that blew itself up. Okay, <laughs> now let me explain this to you. She sends away, there's a deal at Omaha Steaks, you get like the starter pack, you get like two fillets and you get two sirloins, and then you get their jambalaya, which you can make, and it's all the various parts of a jambalaya. Which is not which jambalaya, if, according to well, me. No, which if she made it up, Wouldn't it would be two, two little bowls of jambalaya. <laughs> so she takes that mix. And it, became my base. It became your base really not much of a base and then she makes this huge pot of jambalaya she goes out and she buys chicken and she's got the Sausage. sausages sausages i mean have shrimp yeah which i mean i'm not complaining it's probably going to be very good it's all healthy no it's not what's healthy about jambalaya chicken yeah tomatoes yeah celery yeah onion yeah garlic yeah pepper yeah What's wrong with that? You forgot the sausage. Sausage. She always says it's good for you. You know, oh, hey, it's really low carb. No, it's not. Well, you don't have to eat the rice. Well, I don't have to, eat, but I have to eat the tomato. Uh, stop it. Well, you know. So why is it not going to be ready till Sunday? Well, you want to let it. It's always best a day or two. After. So we, we, you got these Omaha steaks. And you heard that they were terrific, right? Somebody in my office started buying their stuff. Well, what they send you is some frozen slab of meat <laughs> is really what it is. And, and I, we, we made some steaks last night. It wasn't bad. And they weren't bad, but uh, the steaks you buy at Fairway are better. The yeah. steaks I get at Costco and are better. And the hamburger wasn't bad, but the, the hamburger that we get is better. That I get from right down the street is better. Yeah. You know, so, so what, we tried. what is it with Omaha steaks? I mean, I thought when you ordered Omaha steaks, they sent you like a nice thick sirloin, you know, that was would just melt in your mouth. No. It's like, you know, it was like eating uh, uh, um, tapas. No, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> you know? It wasn't that bad. It was okay. I wouldn't order it again. You know, when you're on a low-carb diet like I do, you want a ton of meat. You don't want just a little handful of meat. Anyway, I'm not ordering from there. But well, and they sent sausages. We haven't had the sausages yet. Yeah, I put it in the uh, jambalaya. And and, uh, and and Alex, I put it in the jambalaya. Oh, I wanted to make the sausage. Sorry, <laughs> you'll have it when we eat it. Oh damn it! So there's hardly any meat left. We ate most of that pack. There's two steaks left. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll go to Costco tomorrow and buy some meat. <laughs> you know. I didn't buy meat this week because you said you sent away for the Omaha steaks, and I figured we were going to get this big box of like really cool, wonderful, thick sirloin steak. No, it's a little puny patty. kind of. It looks like uh, it's like a patty. 
It looks like a piece of beef that hasn't worked out. <laughs> you know. So, oh man, my eyes are tearing, Mine burning. Too. Yeah. Oh, it's just, and I'm, my nose is dripping, and it's 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 allergy season, folks. Oh, excuse me. Well, what's the? What, why is it allergy season? Because I mean, the plant you see out in the garden, the stuff's beginning to bloom. No, already. it's not blooming. The movie company and stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> stuff that was there t is tell, blooming. Tell them what, I've been down there by the oh, way. Oh so well, I, I can seen, tell. I haven't seen it. They're they're doing a production on Monday. They're doing so a movie. A movie on movie or television? I don't know. You saw the sign. So um, this morning, like at six in the morning, they were out landscaping the whole courtyard. I mean, really landscaping it. They took out all the weeds and put fresh dirt and potted everything. So uh, did they leave? And, and was that the movie company? Doing yeah. It? So what are they going to do when they when they leave? Are they going to put back all the weeds? No, that's <laughs> probably part of the agreement to leave. But I should have told them about that tree that fell because that would have been very easy for them to. Put it in right. Yeah. Well. Anyway. So. Uh, but you don't know what the what the production is. It has a name downstairs, but I forgot. Yeah, it's what not it was. Mozart in the Jungle. No. It's, I it's would remember. About that. once a year they come yeah. here. Yeah. But it's a big thing, and they give money to the Tenants Association, and you know it's a great place to film. Well, it's it's very nice, you know. Yeah. They had the front gates open this morning. I mean, mm -hmm. everything's wheeling in dirt. And Pebbles really? So they, they were really doing a lot of landscaping. They did the entire court. Even the sides? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'll have to, get, I'll have to go out of the house eventually and see it. <laughs> yeah, by the time you do, it'll be fall. Well, you know, <laughs> my, my question is, now you go out every day because you have to go to work. What's out there that, I, that I'm missing? Life. Oh, life? Oh, really? Yeah. Have you hung around this neighborhood? <laughs> I leave the neighborhood. Where every every block somebody's begging and I you leave know. the neighborhood. That's all over the city, by the way. Is it really? Yeah, there's one person that sits right near where my office is. Has it gotten bad lately? Yeah. Really? I hear it's terrible in San Francisco. I hear there's like ten cities in San Francisco. Really? Yep. Wow. Yep. Well, they the t the tech companies moved up and pushed the mom and pop companies out, pushed the poor people out, which is what's happened in New York. They go go to the Bronx now. They can't afford to live in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. We you, couldn't live in Manhattan. You know what's happening, though? All the little pleasures in life that I have are being assailed, like Amazon's being assailed by Trump for ripping off the post office, you know. Oh, uh, he's such an asshole. He doesn't do his homework. Yeah. He, you know, he doesn't know shit. Oh, and then I had Phil say last night, well, you know, Amazon put out a lot, put a, put a lot of small businesses out of existence. I said, my radio career is gone because tech, of technology. Yeah, I mean, technology right? does that. You know, I mean, times change. Yeah, and we've all lived through certain things. And by the way, you know, if you want to be honest about it, Amazon hires, I don't know, how many hundreds well, of thousands of people? Well, look at all the people, people that, are, that are, look at all the states and countries, because Canada was bidding too, to have their uh, northeastern site built in their state. Yeah. I mean, it brings like 150,000 jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, what's he, what's he griping he's about? He's such a pain in the butt. But he's not a pain in the butt. He's, he's just terrible. He's dangerous. He's a person who's... He, he is dangerous. You know what it is? Stupidity is running the country. We finally, I don't know, folks, have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? In which, uh, because of inbreeding and stuff in the United States, a guy wakes up uh, like 200 years in the future and everybody's really stupid. <laughs> or how about. Because the smart people didn't want to have too many kids, but the poor people were having like 10 of them. <laughs> okay. Or it's like that, that, the, the, animation the movie um about the robot what was yeah, it wally -E. wally -E, where all the people were so fat that they were stuck in these chairs all the time remember yeah they yeah. were so fat because they didn't do anything but idiocracy i have to show it to you you uh, never I, what you see you, you, i didn't say a thing you just said eh. well because you shove a lot of stuff down my throat mm. well by the way what did what's what's his face recommend for movies of the week what did he like? I can't remember. I never, I, I don't go to anything that he recommends anymore. Well, we went to a couple that he recommended and they were terrible. In fact, the one time I put a comment on his Facebook page, I said, don't listen to him. I said, thank you for the, for the 
movie. Well, he, he, there was a one show we've only gotten halfway through called Collateral that he said was really good, and we was just a yawner. But then he did. Was did he turn us on to that? Uh... There was one that came around Christmas time, no, and it got no, like a there... ninety something in Rotten Tomatoes, and he raved about it. And we went to see it. And no, it was but there terrible. was a TV show we watched about a week ago. We binge watched. What was it? Do you, do you remember now? As soon as a bit finished binging, yeah. it's like I forget them. No, but it, it's a whole series. And What was it about? Oh, God. <laughs> what was it anyway? Was it on Hulu or was it on Netflix? We just got finished. Did we finish Counterpart? Is there one more? There's one more Counterpart tomorrow night. guy in my office is watching it now because no, I recommended when, what, it. Oh, God. What was I, I just oh that's the one the, the Channel Four in, in BBC in in BBC, London did, yeah, yeah about the um, uh, yeah uh, about the Russians the, oh yeah okay the yeah, Russians it's about it's this called, this kid who was born born in Russia it's called Mac a, it's Ma- called Mac Mac Mafia Mac Mafia yeah he recommended that and, and that's it was, good it was really very good, good. It was really good it's on well, it's uh, the first time in ten years Alex huh it's the first time in ten years. What the that he's recommended Snyder's, something that was good. Snyder's been right. <laughs> yes. Does anyone out there listen to his reviews? When you call up later, let us know. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be curious. I thought about playing them on set Friday nights instead of having you. Come oh, that out. would be great. Yeah, Try, yeah, that do that. Yeah, I'll do that instead of okay. you from oh, here on in. Thank you. Because nobody wants you. I know. In fact, nobody's writing anything about us talking together. Well, so. nobody wants to listen to old people. Of course. <laughs> of course. Like my not. T-shirt? It, end gun violence. Very good. Yeah. Uh, oh. How about uh, Laura Ingram, all the advertisers she's I'm lost. glad. She's such a cunt. I mean, even though she apologized, even though she apologized, the advertisers are still leaving her. Good. She's a cunt. Well, you know, after... She, she, it's finally catching up with her. Yeah. She said so many bad things about people over the years. She deserves everything Like, what she did gets. she say about somebody? I can't remember. <laughs> but it's almost time. I have to blow my nose. I well, you can. better turn the sound off because we don't want to hear it. I turned it off. Okay. Yeah. I never fart on the air. You should do. Uh, no, I don't. You should do. I never fart on the air. You do. But I make sure I fart when I'm in with you. Yes, you do. And you make sure you fart when <laughs> oh, I'm in boy, there. do I. She has this uh, orange spray. It's orange extract. There's no chemicals in it. Yes, and then whenever she farts, I know she has because I've got suddenly the spray of orange in my face. And what it then does is the orange mixes with the (laughs) fart and gives you fart-smelling orange. It's better than Airwick. Well, how do you know? Because it has no chemicals in it. I like the smell of it. And I'm allergic to all that spray, so I can't use it anyway. Oh, you're allergic? Oh, well, there's chemicals, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy one. The, they had this mist one, this air, new mist thing. I, I, I want one of those. No. What they should do is combine like an echo with an air spray. <laughs> you can say, Marjorie just farted. Psst. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time. No, it's not. So, um, uh, let me see here. Oh, so Shecky today called me using his echo. Which one? One of the five or ten he bought, he suddenly went crazy with Echo. And I would buy a couple more, but I can't figure out where I would put them. I wouldn't put it in here because Echo has a tendency to. Um, uh, to <laughs> we had the one in the bedroom, we're watching television or we're chatting, then all of a sudden, out of the blue comes this I'm not sure what you just said. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or. or that's a thing that I've, I've been wondering myself or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's, and it's, like, it's like Echo has a... Mind of its own. Uh, no, it, 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 she, she's getting senile. <laughs> it's like, you know. I've been thinking about that too. Uh, we're sitting there, we're watching TV, and all of a sudden she says something. And we look over and we go, what was that? What the fuck was that about? <laughs> you know, what went on on TV? <laughs> we have it set so she'll respond to the word echo, Okay. Because Alexa we, is too close to Alexa Alex. is too close to my name. Yeah. However, we do have a friend named Echo. Yes, we do. So I wonder what they would do in their house. They have an Alexa. They say Alexa. <laughs> I, Alexa probably would be easier than Echo. Somehow I always have to remember to say Echo. Well, I think of Echo and then I, I'm able to say it. Yeah. But uh, uh, 
if she she will tell Echo shut the fuck up and things like that. Which does Echo respond to it when you say shut the fuck Probably up? Probably not. Yeah. Oh, so I want to tell you, uh, Vernon, you you just cost me a lot of money, or not a lot of money. What did it Vernon cost me do? Twenty nine dollars. Well, he. Uh, is he here? It is. Uh, he he told me to get one of these. You got that. That's the first one, right? Oh, this is the new one. Oh, but, but and because what happened is you got this, the exact this, same thing this, again. This is a, no, it's not the same exact thing. This is the other one. This one that works like a charm. Yeah. Well, what it is is it's a uh, it, it's a Bluetooth transmitter. I'm coming over. No, don't come over yet. It's a blue. <laughs> it's a blue. Don't you dare. <laughs> It's a Bluetooth transmitter, and the one that I bought, there, there is a, a, a delay. There's a delay. There's a delay with this one, so there's an echo Life is when fun. I talk. So Vernon said, get this one, because it isn't a problem. So I got this one. Guess what, Vernon? There's a delay. Is Vernon the it, one with... Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it, 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 I think it was Vernon, yeah. This one, however, has a longer delay than this one. So hopefully, so maybe the know. third one you'll get will be. I right mean, it's on. it's not a lot, but it's enough that it's annoying to me. You know, you can't use it. Right. Uh, okay, it's time. No, it's not time yet. It's not time. You got three minutes. You got to keep sitting over there. <laughs> what, what, what what are you, what are you doing? I'm coming over. What are you, no, you're you're no you no you're, you're not. I'm over. Oh damn it. Damn you, damn you, damn you. Huh. Well, come on over. Come on over. Let me just uh, get rid of this. I got to get some stuff up. You see, I, was, I, I wasn't ready because you, you decided, you know, you always have to do things earlier than they should be done. Well, it's past my bedtime. Well, I didn't pass my bedtime, and I have to get to sleep <laughs> because I, need, I have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go do nothing tomorrow. I'm going to the gym. You're going to the gym, yeah. Um she forgot a doctor's appointment yesterday. Oh, my God. The most important doctor of all my doctors. Yeah. And it takes like six or seven months to see him. Why does it take that long? It, he's, have, they, have they pushed up your appointment? So she left a message that she's yeah, working yeah, on it and she'll yeah, call okay. me. But anyway, she forgot completely and about. And it's a major doctor. Huh? It was a major doctor. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, had to get uh, blood work. Yeah, yeah. And it was the end of a two-year with, really with, turned... with a medicine that I was using. And um, this was like the big meeting. Now, mm -hmm. where do we go from here? So 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the office, I remembered that I had the appointment. I had everything in my bag to bring to him. Everything mm -hmm. was pri 2 o'clock. 3 o'clock, I left the office and went and took my bus home. I totally forgot I had the doctor's appointment. You totally forgot you had yeah. the doctor's appointment. And I got home, and I realized that I forgot. You, there was, wasn't enough time to go back and no, see? No. no. Too bad. Yeah. No, well. That's okay. It's What, what, what is it? Fruteo? That's the, the, the shots. And, and the shots are for what? Uh, bone loss. Bone loss. How's bone your loss. bone loss? Oh, well, there's increase in bone mass over the last two years. You've so had an increase good. in bone mass. Yeah. Uh, 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 I think uh, maybe um, Phil might have a lack of bone mass. <laughs> With the, <laughs> like you. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Our lines are open. I, okay, I, yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to tell anybody. It's they don't want to call. They don't have to call. Please, this girl's tired. Because my eyes are burning tonight. I would Mine love too. to go to sleep early or get out of here early. Never I, go to I have sleep. a lot of shows I have to we, catch up on. We had a, um, a guest, and of course, it threw Alex off because he couldn't go into the other bedroom to watch his television. You watched it from here? Yeah, I watched him in you here. You didn't go in the it's living room? No, no. Better, better, just fine. I sit in the chair here, and I watch the TV over there. Yeah, so you're fine. You know, and I can also potchke around with the computers at the same time. Okay. So, you know, it, it works okay. All right, sweetie. I'm wait, 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 you're, you can't leave me till I have somebody here wait, with me. Oh, go, go anyway. Bye. Bye. We'll see you later. Okay. Goodbye. No. Leave. No. Get out of here. No. I don't want you here. <laughs> go. No. I never loved you anyway. I know. Go. Well, that we know. Go. Oh, boy. 
Yeah. Jeff Stein. I'm, d- we're d- I'm doing my interview with uh, Jack Jeff. on There's Monday. Jeff. I'm doing my interview with Jack on Monday. I don't know when we're going to run it or how we're going to run it. It doesn't matter. You'll worry about that later. I'll worry about it later. Uh, here comes Jeff Stein. He's the first up tonight. Uh, hey, h- hello, there he Jeff. Is. There you are. How are you doing? How are you? Happy Passover. That's what I'm saying to you. Happy yeah. Passover to you, too. What's the Jewish word for Passover? Pesach? Pesach. Pesach. <laughs> Happy Pesach. Yeah. I have a box of matzah that well, I bought today. You're talking to the mic. Here, huh? I have a box of matzah that I bought. Whole yeah, wheat she, matzah. Yeah, yeah, whole wheat matzah. Who eats whole wheat matzah? Not supposed to be whole wheat but, you know, I mean, when, when they were going across the uh, the desert and they were leaving um uh, oh, they were leaving oh, I want some of that. they were leaving the pharaoh and they were running away from him. Uh they didn't say, did anybody bring some what, whole, 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 whole wheat, wheat matzah? matzah? <laughs> <laughs> I can't go on this trip if you don't have whole wheat matzah. <laughs> don't you know that it's unleavened bread, not unleavened whole wheat? Why don't you give them for so. Passover? Yeah, no, because you'll drop them. I'll put them here anyway. Yeah. You got to see what my wife is doing for, for Passover. For Passover. Hi. Tomorrow night we're doing a seder. Hello. Hi. And I'm getting ready for Easter. Yeah. Hi. Oh. I see. Hi, okay. hi, how are you? Hi, yeah. How are you? Hey, hey, show, Can show you us. see my work? Let's see. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, so, you so, so you're a Jew who just doesn't know which holiday to ha- have. No, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> oh, you're, oh. oh, you're not Jewish. Yeah, oh, oh, are you married to Shiksa? A Gentile. A Shiksa. A Gentile. Uh, She's parents, very Gentile. Did your parents sit Shiva? <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend no. from high school who... who she mar- he married um, a black woman, and yeah, talk into the his parents sat shiva for him yeah. until the baby was born. Right. Once the baby oh. was born, then they came back into the fold. Yeah. New rules. Our family was all good, right? Yeah. Your family was excellent. Yeah. And my family was pretty good. That's great. How long are you married? 32 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. My family was excellent considering you were married with two kids. You know, you were divorced with two kids. I thought yeah. they were good. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's terrific. 32 years. Wow. That's... Kevin's with us early tonight. Hi, Hi Kevin. Kevin. Good evening. Yes. Uh, you have to talk because there are some people who are listening to this as a Kevin, radio show. Kevin, where are you? Because it's all light outside. He's in California. Oh, okay. So it's what? California. Seven? Yeah. Seven. And by the way, you will never hear the end of Omaha Steaks. What do you mean? <laughs> Why? What happened to that? You tried them? They will continue to send you more and more coupons for more and more oh, deals. I'm getting them already. <laughs> Are now you they, really? Yeah, because I set up the account. And so I'm oh. constantly getting Well, I, I thought that because, you know, it was like Omaha Steaks and, oh, we've got these. Fresh one, cut off the beef yeah, yeah, and yeah, sent to that, you. That they would be sensational. But they're not oh, even. Oh, yeah. Cl- they're, you know, they're, they're, just, they're okay. They're just little medallions of beef. Exactly. Four <laughs> ounces. Yeah. Yeah. We Eight got them ounces. as a gift one time. And, and then all of a sudden you get on their mailing list and you get nothing but, oh, you will send you $85 worth, you know, $300 worth of meat for 50 Six, bucks. $69. And, yeah. 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 Well, we, we little, had the hamburgers tonight and the hamburgers were okay. They were tiny. They were tiny. They were tiny. But they're not as good as the ones I make from the grocery store down the street. Right. And the meat isn't as good as the stuff I get at Costco. Right. You know. Absolutely. You know. And, and, uh, you know, because Phil, you know, joined the NRA again. Re-upped his membership with the NRA just to piss us off. Did you get a travel bag? (laughs) No. I I got it ripped. (laughs) He, he He gets a jacket when he dies. (laughs) <laughs> you know, the deal was a lifetime member gets a leather jacket. Yeah, so you get two jackets if you kill somebody. When do right. you get your leather jacket? You don't if you pay it quarterly. Oh. So if I sent them a check for fifteen hundred dollars, they'd send me a jacket. Oh, okay. Emblazoned with the uh, initials NRA. Oh, wonderful! I proudly display it, and uh, but since I'm making uh, quarterly payments. I'm a stiff. I get a card and I get a sticker. Well, if I were you, you I would stop. I would, I would stop sending them the fucking money. Yeah, you got the card. You know, I would stop so sending you just leave them the money. At a time. No, really, because you know, you you got snockered on that deal. You thought you uh, were going to get yourself a. Phil, did you, you know, see my shirt? Uh, N gun. 
Uh, and it's, uh, if she stands uh, up, violence. Uh, violence. Yeah. And it matches, uh, sure. you see my plaid pants? And, and gun. No uh, of course, but on the back, isn't it a target? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is a target. Yeah. Where'd you get that shirt? A target? Uh, yeah. yeah. It came from Target. Yeah. One, your nose is dripping. Excuse me, folks. Uh, I thought I'm going to say good night. Good see, night, I guys. Good I could have turned off the mic I know, if you but weren't you never here. Do. You never do. I turn off the microphone never. when I blow my nose never. on the air. Never. I, I you know. <laughs> All right. Okay. You could have done one of those right. baseball rockets nuts, too, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I'm just feeling tight. Uh, I've got really got these. Al Are you having allergy problems, Jeff, up there? No, I don't. Not too much. Uh, uh, yeah. How yeah. You, how you feeling, Phil? Uh, I'm feeling all right. Although uh, this is my this was my first day at work, uh, and I, I I left a little early to go to the chiropractor, and then. Uh, uh, didn't get a chance to mail off your thing, but well, that's uh, okay. But, you'll you'll mail it off within the next three years. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll do it in the morning. <laughs> I go in late on Saturday. Does the does the chiropractor massage your uh, prostate? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't get a prostate massage anymore. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. But are, but, you, are uh, you feeling pretty good? I, I, you, yeah, yeah. Except for the fact that uh, if you don't change the the depends fast enough, uh, they disintegrate. What? And they have little crystals in them. Uh, these are the crystals that must, um, you know, uh, but uh, I don't know, it was maybe three hours and a couple times I didn't think about it and uh, didn't make it to the restroom. And uh, the depends, the pads inside, actually the paper disintegrates. Well, oh, that's then a we, mean uh, joke. Huh? That's a mean joke on the part yes, of the, the Depends company. On you. Huh? So uh, I have to be a little more careful and, uh, you know, practice these Kegel things. But I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting back to normal. It's just that the doctor says I shouldn't be and that it should take about six months. <laughs> so, you know. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I, it just appears to me that after all these years uh, – of, of removing prostates, that they would have had some kind of better way of handling the whole situation. You know, they do, they do. But I went to Kaiser, and <laughs> so, you know, what can I tell you? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's not so bad. I mean, here I am. It's two weeks. I went back to work. Uh, I saw that nobody wrote any business, which wasn't good. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. but but it, you you could work the whole day without too much trouble. Yeah. 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 I have my own bathroom in my office, so it's it's easy for me to yeah you know, just get up. And but but you must up. be happy with your urine flow. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm actually too happy with it. It's uh, sometimes <laughs> it's when I don't want it to. <laughs> so. See, folks, this is what you do when you come to the to GabNet. It should be yeah. called GeezerNet. That's what we should call it. I'm renaming it GeezerNet. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, how, so how's it going, Phil? Well, I didn't pee my pants today. Well, yeah, uh, hey, I, I came up with another one since you didn't like the one I had last night. How about Alex Bennett, activist for the ages? For the aged. Yeah, well, aged or ages, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I, st I well, thank God I, I don't pee my pants, but, you know. Yeah, but, you know, if you're looking for a position as to, you know, where you could, where that, career positions that's i think that's what it means uh, yeah thanks for helping me position myself you know well i i position myself quite often yeah. <laughs> sometimes not quickly enough but it's uh you know i mean it's just uh um um you know i'm I, i'm glad that it's over for you and it looks like you're clean and it doesn't look like you have any cancer left and uh, you know the uh, guy said man i don't if I didn't Google it, so I don't fully understand what it meant. But he said that the margins were clear. Yeah, the now, margins. The margins are uh, the margins of the area where they they took the stuff out and stuff. You know. Oh, I see. And yeah. uh, now they just yeah. uh, in six weeks I'll get another PSA test, and yeah. they want to make sure it's zero. Yeah. Who just who just <clears throat> called us? Who is this? Schmitty. Oh, it's my old girlfriend. Kathleen, Yay. also known as Schmoody. I miss Seder. 
over at Gary's. You wait, you're at the Seder? No, I said I missed. Oh, you that. missed the the Seder. Yeah, we have this uh, my business manager's name is Gary and Gary holds um a massive Passover. Uh, how many people? Maybe 50 people or something all at one big long table. Uh, and the shiksa, it was awesome. And the shiksa, you were the official shiksa for the <laughs> evening. Yes. Blonde Amazon, yes. Yes, but it was so fun. Oh, what? Oh, th oh, those? Yeah, yeah. Very nice. They were very nice. But you know, uh, uh, Marjorie mentions to me that we never get invited to Passover anymore. And uh, who? Uh, well, I said to her, "Do you really want to go?" And she says, "Not really." You know, I like the food, no. but if it takes too long to eat it, I don't want to go, you know. But That's 30, funny. 30,000 Palestinians were trying to get into Passover service uh, in Israel uh, today. You know, they said that they didn't have a good Seder on their side of the fence. And uh, so they tried to uh, Is this a to joke? The fence. Is this a joke? No, no, on, on the level. Uh, 16 dead, 750 injured. Trying to get to Passover? That's terrible. Well, it so happens that there was a Passover uprising, and the uh, the Hamas leaders said to go in and take Israel back uh, from the Israelis. And so they, uh, 30,000, they expected 100,000, but 30,000 hit the fences, and uh, they were trying to blow the fence up, do things like that so they can get across and do major damage. And they uh, put some resistance. Uh. What is that uh, whistling? Don't know. Sounds like somebody's whistling. I know. It's none that of you guys. my son, Sean. Don't uh, whistle. They can hear you. Oh, was that what it was? <laughs> yes. Well, tell the little brat to shut up, okay? <laughs> hey, they said for me to tell you, tell the little brat to shut up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you said you wouldn't hit me in public. Hey, remember that time we were at the hardware store? It was somewhere in Marin. And you would you would turn to me and I would cringe like you like you were gonna hit me and remember these guys started giving you dirty looks oh, and yeah, you were telling me yeah. knock it yeah. off. Well, you and I would, you, 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 she and I used to, she and I used to have a lot of practical jokes we would play outside. And today a lot of them especially would not go over very well. Are, are they, no, they wouldn't, but boy, they were funny. Yeah. Uh, the only hardware store I can think of, Marin, is Goodman's. You know, right There's off... A, yeah, uh, it's a huge... Is it still yeah. there? Is it still yeah. there? Yeah, it's still there. Wow. wow. It's nice That's store. probably exactly what it was, but I was messing with him, you know, and these two guys are giving him dirty looks, and then, you know, I thought... Well, well, well I remember well, you and I... You know, I could have been evil and really pushed it, but I would never do that. You and I wanted to, I know, wanted to find somebody who could teach us stunt work for movies so that we could yeah. we, we could literally <laughs> yeah. have fist fights with each other, you know, without actually hurting our, ourselves, right? L learning oh, how that to just would have been fantastic. And then, so we just break out into a, a roaring fight, you and I, fist fight. Totally. Yeah. yeah, that was the kind of sense of humor we had, uh, you know, that and f I remember once my be best thing with her, you're going to love this, guys. We're going up a flight. Uh, we've been doing all kinds of things to like prank each other during that day. And I had this uh, this uh, back stair. Well, it was kind of like it was a, a fire escape, really. Uh, and and uh, I was walking up ahead of her and she was right behind me at ass level. And so I let one go. I think that that was one of the classic moments. You do remember yes, that. Yes, you don't got you? me good, you asshole. Yeah, and she swore she'd get me good, and she did later on. She was very, you know. This is why the relationship at, at, at once was a terrific relationship, but one that would have never worked. <laughs> you know? Well, you know what? A friend of mine was asking me about you, and and, you know, she was talking about video games and stuff, and I said... Because, you know, I never really got into video games, but, you know, we'd be laying on the bed and you'd be playing video games and I'd be happy as a lark watching you play because I would die laughing. Man, you used to get pissed yeah, playing. Yeah, well, I took my playing of video games seriously. 
um, uh, but uh, no, but you know, it was, uh, we had to, we had our that and the Christmas card we turned out. That was another good hoot, where we uh, that sent, was we sent out funny. a Christmas card with uh, a family portrait, but we got. Her cousins, her cousins, uh, her. It was my my nephew, niece, and my niece. two nieces and a nephew. And as soon as the flash went off, Raven and River just lost y- it. Yeah, and, and so we have a Christmas picture, me in a sweater, and we have the Christmas background. We went down to Sears and had Sears do it, so it looked really authentic. And then we sent out these cards that said, uh, uh, "Happy Holidays from the Schwarzmans." From the Schwarzmans. Oh, and, and my god! And we would gosh, send these to so all the funny. people we knew, and they would write us, and they would call us going, I didn't know you got married. Where, where, I didn't know you had kids. <laughs> and where did that blonde bitch come from? It, it, she doesn't look Jewish at all. <laughs> it was, that, was, that was, I think, our best prank. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was also the most... Well, ex- no, remember when the internet first came out and... and so remember they'd have those, uh, what were they called? Avatars. And so we'd pick an avatar and I'd be talking and then they'd say, hey, I really want to see you. And remember, we'd turn on the camera and it would be you mouthing what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Right. But anyway, that was... We a, were jerks. We were assholes. But not to each other. Totally. No, not to each other, though, to the rest of the world. And I think that was important. You know. It was important. It was very important. So how is Trump? Anyway, uh, hey, I just wanted to yeah. say hi. Okay. It's always nice to see. It, 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 I do have ex-girlfriends that I'm still friends with, you know. So, yes. you know. Uh, was I a sexist pig? No, not at all. You know, you were very much a gentleman. Yeah. See, that's, what they, that's what they all say. You know. And then they leave me. You know, about... <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you very much, dear. Okay, bye-bye. That's Schmoody, ladies and gentlemen, the famous Schmoody. And- yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we're back to this. Uh, any, anybody, you, you got to watch this uh, documentary on, uh, on Trump on Netflix. It's really good. Now, I know Phil is thinking it's probably really good because it puts down Trump. No, it pretty much just shows Trump. Throughout his life and the, the things he got himself into and the bankruptcies and the things like that. And after it's all over, it, it, you know, you really see him slowly in this thing turn into an asshole. Because in the beginning, he was just kind of a charming playboy, you know. And then he slowly turned into the asshole we have we all know now. What is the place that the uh, show is on? It's on Netflix. Oh, yeah, it's a four part series of about anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour an episode. And I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. I think you'll find it um, worthwhile. So what, what time period does it cover? Like, it covers it, it. You know what it does? I, I really liked about it. Most of these things we go. And so, he, you know, the family started out with blah, blah, blah. And so on, so on, yeah, and so yeah. on. Drumpf coming over and so on. No, they didn't do any of that. They started out with Donald Trump deciding to go to New York and uh, uh, do some projects to try and, and get into that, get into the New York market. And, and he did so with the uh, the uh, Commodore Hotel, which he changed into the uh, Hyatt. And um, uh, and then it talks about him building Trump Tower. But then, pretty much everything else in his career was a failure. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, just did, he, he said. Con, I didn't see this, but didn't he sort of con his way into that Hyatt deal, telling them? One guy. Well, that I, I, he he, he, he actually did the refurb of the Commodore Hotel, but yeah, then but it, was na- the it was it was named the something Hyatt. I can't remember what it's called now. It's still there, uh, the Park Hyatt, I think it's called. And uh, I don't know why Hyatt got into it unless he started running out of money and he needed them as a partner no. or something like that. But it, he didn't put his name on it, okay? And then he bought the Bl- Plaza Hotel which after a while he couldn't afford any longer, so he sold it to, uh, I think, a Saudi, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and now a Chi- the Chinese own it. Uh, and then he built Trump Tower. Uh, and, uh, but then when he went to build, uh, when he went down to, to uh, Atlantic City, he had the, uh, 
he had the Trump um, um, Plaza and he had the Trump, I forget what the other hotel was. And then he decided to build the, to build the Taj Mahal. Did he which, revitalize which, a whole tract, the land that uh, was in shambles? Uh, no, you're, talk, you're talking about the Woolman uh, skating rink. That was a very small thing that uh, he did. It's a big tract of land. No, it was, it was, it was, it was the size of a skating rink. That's it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, he, there's, it, it's there's just two city things that I know about him. Yeah. Is there was a place in the Bronx, which I always thought it was just a dump, and uh, he turned it into a golf course, a crappy golf course, but a golf course. The other thing is he used to have an airplane company. He had, no, he had an airline. Airline, yeah. Airline, yeah. yeah. It was called Trump whatever, though. Yeah. And that lasted uh, maybe a year. Yeah, that, did, that didn't work yeah. out. Bro. Trump stakes oh. didn't work out. Trump ties yeah. didn't work out. But then this the <clears throat> thing that was his undoing was when he built the Taj Mahal, he had no respect for the fact that, you know, you can only, you can only owe so much money where it's impossible for you to ever pay back the debt. And what they said is... The Taj Mahal would have had to earn a million dollars a week in order to pay off the notes. And that's where it went wrong. Because And he, you know, when you say he's a good businessman, you just don't make that kind of deal. You build it cheaper, you know, or you yeah. don't build it at all if that's going to be what you're going to have to pay out. He have financing at a different rate. And that financing pulled out, and that's what put him in. No, uh, no, that's not what this documentary said. He, to begin with, had too much financing. He had too much of a interest debt that was impossible. Even if they say, even if the place were packed every single day, okay, he couldn't possibly uh, make the banknotes. That it was that badly thought out. <clears throat> they say it was, and it, what? I don't know if you listened to his uh, his speech the other day in Ohio. You know, I only listened to probably about ten minutes of it, but I, you know, I, I went back and forth between Fox and MSNBC because I like to do their comparison on how they cover it. You know. Yeah. Right. And and MSNBC was st strictly stuck on him, but I'd go to Fox and you'd see him go back and forth, and every time he talked about himself and how well he did with building and and he'd back they'd back off on the camera and show these construction workers standing there and he'd talk about you know i did pretty good with my building and and how well i did with building wasn't i good and the guys in the hard hats were just sitting there and they wouldn't clap or nothing and i'm going geez you know fox was backing off on all this and, and showing these and there'd be about three or four guys clapping and he'd, he'd talk about how good he was with building and how good he was with hiring these these union workers and none of them were clapping and, and these are the guys that were doing all the building and how he was going to build up the infrastructure and how well he was doing. And I, and I was looking at that and I was going, holy shit, this is, this is I got strange. Message, Kevin. I got, huh? the message, I got a different message. I got the message that he was saying, hey, I'm like you. I build stuff, too. That, well, that yeah, I was, I was getting that message, too, but it yeah. wasn't going across to the, to the audience there, especially the audience they put behind him in the bleachers. Oh, well, I got it. You know, I was just watching on TV. You know? Yeah, I was watching too, but I didn't. I didn't see that translating to them. What's very, as, what was very as telling, much as they would want it to. Was yeah. was when his father died, they held a funeral service for him at the Fifth Avenue Church here in Manhattan, and uh, he gave a eulogy, and they said the eulogy that he did was nothing but him talking about his own accomplishments, nothing about yeah. his father's accomplishments. Everybody was appalled yeah. by that. Yeah. But that's that's how he is, you know, and that he's very thin skinned. And they put the whole reason he ran for president was because Obama put him down at the for the correspondence dinner. And he didn't like the fact that somebody was making a joke at his expense, which if you go to the correspondence dinner and you're well known, you better be expected to be roasted. You know, that's part of the yeah. that's part of the territory. Yeah, but if he if if he was that thin skinned, and ran and lost, that wouldn't have accomplished his uh, uh, his issues with Obama. You know, it wouldn't have 
done anything. He to, has tried to undo everything Obama's done because of that correspondence dinner. That, I think that's so. no. All the most of the people in this documentary seem to agree with that assessment. That in fact, Roger Stone, who he, if you remember, Roger Stone has been in a lot of trouble with. Uh, his you know, I, was supposed to, I was supposed to see him on a Commonwealth Club thing, and they canceled it. Yeah, well, he, he's in a lot of trouble because there's a lot of things about him <laughs> dealing with the Russians and so on. And Trump has constantly said about Roger Stone, oh, well, he was a minor functionary uh, in the campaign. Roger Stone was with him for something like 10 fucking years, working for Trump as his political analyst. Worked for everybody. No, but he worked for Trump, and Trump says, oh, he's just a minor functionary. I don't even know. Roger who? You know. Uh, but, no, they say that, that that moment he was, he left the correspondence dinner early. It, it, uh, he was very upset by it. And, and if you listen to what, what Obama was saying, it was all good-natured stuff. It wasn't, you know, slamming him. It was your typical roast stuff, you know. And yeah. uh, and and he just they say he was just so that's when he decided that he was going to run for president, you know. And so now look what you got, Phil. I'm happy with him. Oh, you're happy with him. <laughs> Do you have any stocks? No. Oh, oh, OK. Well, then I guess you could be happy with him. Um, you know, I mean, uh, he, I don't gamble. Somebody said he is the president for stupid people. Well, you know, uh, there must be a lot of stupid people out there. Because, yeah, well, uh, the, there weren't enough to get him elected by a majority. He got elected by the Electoral College. Uh, he elected by a majority of Americans. The problem was that the majority that voted were illegal aliens. Oh, I see. Illegal aliens. It's so easy Bot for an illegal alien to vote because they can yeah. just go right in and show those phony papers they have. Show any papers. Yeah. They just say, hey, my name is Gonzalez, and I'm here to vote. And, you can't vote unless you're a citizen, Phil. Yeah, but there's these dead guys on the uh, on the roster. So you just go in, you say, yeah, that's me. Mm. You know, you can register to vote. Nobody nobody asks you for your ID when you register to vote. I see. Make yeah. America <laughs> smart again. Yeah, you got that from, uh, from Jack, okay. right? Yeah. Jack, yeah. By the way, I gotta put. So, yeah, hold on a second. Just keep talking. I gotta put some. Oh, Phil, you need one of these. My eyes. I got the hat. Do I have any of that stuff here? Uh, let me see here. Do I have any of it? No. But no. it's not so smart. It's only great. Oh, I'm just gonna be tearing like crazy and not being able to do anything about it. Mm. Okay. I well. Take. Um, I, I uh, usually, you know, if I take some uh, eye drops, I may have to go out to the other room here and get the I eye drops. Take Claritin D for uh, uh, for uh, that stuff doesn't work. I, I'll, I'll show you what I. <laughs> I do have this. Maybe I'll try and see if it mitigates what I'm going through right now. This is uh, generic Flonase. Oh, all right. You know, and then you stick it in your nose. You, do you know what? Uh, did I? Uh, do, do you know? Did I tell you what uh, what we got? What, what, what the drug we just got? Marjorie, you know, has to take uh, a uh, Dilaud. Yeah. So the uh, insurance company said uh, we're going to give it to you free. Here is some. Uh, what's it called? What what's it? Nar Narcan? I think it's called. I don't know. It's it's the spray that you put in somebody's nose if they overdose and it automatically stops them from overdosing. So we now have that in the house. So if any of you want to come over and overdose, we're ready for it. I thought the way they did the overdose was the way they did it on Pulp Fiction. When uh, Uma Thurman uh, snorted up that heroin, and then all of a sudden, boom, they got him. Well, that was before Narcan. Oh, okay. That was the way. The only way you could do it with before Narcan. But Narcan supposedly has saved a lot of lives. And cops, I'm surprised you don't know about it. Cops carry it now. Uh, well, I haven't been a cop for 13 huh? years. You haven't been a cop for 13 years, but cops carry it now. My mic was up too high. 
Uh, cops carry it now, and all schools have it. And the company that makes it are, is giving it away free to police departments and to schools. Really? Yeah. Well, next time I overdose, I'll have some on me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> they gave it to us uh, for free, but they said the next one will be $30. But, you know, we, we're probably never going to need it. And the reason they gave it to her, it's strange, because they didn't think, hey, you know, Marjorie's a drug addict and she's going to OD. But if she perhaps takes two doses and doesn't realize she took two doses and she goes into an overdose of some sort, we have the way to solve the problem. So how many overdoses do you get in the bottle? Uh, Narcan, you only get one spray in Narcan. Once you use that's the spray, it. that's it. You put it in one nostril, squeeze, and uh, how, how she put it was, here's, here's, here's what you do. You take this, you squeeze it, right? She had a fake mm -hmm. one, and she says you squeeze it in and shove it up all the way uh, for a whole nostril's worth, all right? And then call an ambulance. <laughs> that was the second rule, call an ambulance. Yeah, or don't do the... The drugs in the first place or yeah. make sure you don't double up well you know she has to do them because she's otherwise she'd be in a great deal of pain you know i i kept asking them for dilaudid uh when i was in the hospital and i was in pain and they kept wanting to give me uh vicodin and uh you know and then they gave me something intravenously but i i wanted because i had some of that dilaudid and it's good stuff. Well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 for the prostate thing, you wanted to? Yeah, for the operation. I, you know, there, there was a significant amount of pain. Did you inform them that the only reason why you wanted the operation was for the drugs? No, but you I know? kept telling them. I listened to your advice, and they asked me, what is your pain threshold? I said, it's 10. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you never say, you never say, oh, it's five. Because then they just give you the light dose, right? But you right. go... Oh man, this 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 kidney stone ten ten, and, and then absolutely. next thing you know, you're you're flying high. It's wonderful. I well, loved it. It was wonderful. See, days I, I passed high. by. Days passed into nights. I didn't know. I didn't care. Well, I don't get high. I don't do illegal drugs. So when well, uh, maybe you I, should, was, Phil. Yeah, but when it was legal to do it, I said it's a ten. Give me, and. Uh, you know, they're, and they're giving me... Uh, I don't think Patrick does drugs either, do you, Patrick? No, in fact, um, the, the last surgery I had last year for kidney stone and the one that I'll be having um, next month, mm -hmm. uh, my pain threshold, I don't have any pain. I just tell them, all right, it's zero. So I, I don't want any drugs. I, I don't want to be any more out of it than I am coming out of the anesthesia. So I, yeah. Hey, if we do drugs, they pull our Republican card. Well, know? I'll tell you something. I mean, when I had this pain from the kidney stone, and kidney stone pain is pretty rel oh, yeah. relentless. Is you, well, you, do, one, did you get pain from it, Patrick? No, I don't, but I'm, everybody I talk to, male or female, that's had them, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I don't get any sensation that I have it at all. So it's a blessing, mm -hmm. but it's also a curse, you know, right. that I, that if I could feel it in the beginning stages, might be able to take care of it sooner, but that's yeah. right. Yeah, well, I mean, I did the, I did it, you know, I did the drugs, did the um, uh, Dilaudid that they, you know, would give me whenever I would say, oh, it's a 10. Uh, and it was painful, and it did. It immediately mitigated the pain. The pain went away. It may not have gone away. You just didn't care if you had it. You know, I mean, I, it just went. I, I, when I got the kidney stone last year, I I felt uncomfortable. It uh, it, it hurt, so I drove myself to the hospital mm. to the emergency room. I get into the emergency room, and as I'm walking towards the desk, the pain got so severe that they had to put me in a wheelchair. And uh, and roll me in. It was. I went from hey, yeah. this is uncomfortable to uh, it's hard to walk to I can't stand up anymore. Yeah, kidney stones are pretty. I mean, I'd never had one in my life, and and and, uh, and they kept me in the hospital for four and a half days waiting for it to pass. You know, they right. wouldn't let me out. Uh, it, uh, yes, Patrick. Yeah, the other thing that I'm dealing with, um, I know I told Phil this. I don't think I mentioned it here. And I've got a bladder stone. By the way, and folks, I'm, once again, this is Bennett's 
waiting room. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I, I've got a bladder stone, and I've never had one of those before, and it's a half of an inch. So wow, that's a big um, And what it does is it bounces around inside the bladder and make the bladder spasm. Therefore, like Phil needing depends, that's what I would need. Um, so I'm constantly pissing myself for the last week and a half and will be until my surgery on the 19th. I understand why nobody wants to listen to this show. <laughs> uh, hey, I got to go get a colonoscopy. Really? Yeah. You know, yeah. between the four, the, well, at least the four of us, we, we're the ones that, you know, have all of these health issues. Alex is only a complainer. If You know, he complains about health issues, but he is healthier than a horse. You know yeah. what? I'm going to call in that night, and what, I'm going to yeah. do it live from the table. How about that? Uh, wait, well, are they doing well, it? Wait a minute. Wait, are they doing your colonoscopy at night? Maybe I'll arrange that. Just record it. A night, but, you know, a nighttime yeah. colonoscopy. Oh, we'll, how how we'll romantic. How romantic. A nighttime we'll colonoscopy. Do a, we'll do a journey. We'll do yeah. a journey through the colon. Well, well you know, um, um, <laughs> uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel uh, just did a colonoscopy on his TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he tried to do that Kitty Couric thing, right? Yeah, Couric uh, was his advisor on it. Uh, it, it. You know, and I, I have been known, as you may well know, of posting my, because they give you pictures of your, <laughs> of your, <laughs> of your polyps and stuff. Your journey uh, through of the, of the, you know, the pictures that they take. And then I put them up on my Facebook page. And I just titled them Inside Alex Bennett. Yeah. Dang, I missed it. <laughs> yeah. You, you missed it? Just go back. It's there somewhere. Uh, uh, Alex on demand. Yeah. But I, you know, and I, I love those pictures. They're cute. I look adorable in them. I really do. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I saved a stance that they put into my kidney that I have to pull out at, when I remove the, um, the uh, piss bag, and right. I keep those for Christmas decoration. Do you Why really? They're reusable? Yeah, because they're, they're bright green. So oh. I just wash them off, and I, I save them, and I put them on my little Christmas oh. tree. Oh, there's the uh, screws that... Uh... those That's all the hardware that came out on my leg. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, and you they framed, it. You framed it. You framed it. Yeah, I oh, saved it. That's so fucking cool. You framed it. Yeah, that's yeah. the stuff that came out of my leg that was all infected. Oh, wow. Yeah. No wonder. It looks like you went to Ace Hardware for... Uh... Exactly what it is. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I had to hold it against my doctor because he infected me with this shit. Yeah, So and so you got to frame and frame. That's wonderful. Yeah. Was there some reason you got infected? Uh, was it a botched operation? It wasn't. Yeah, he, he the wound was open and then it got uh, staff. And then when he pulled all those screws out, it was open and it got more staff and it went into the bone. Oof. And then it all closed up and sealed all the staff inside the bone. Nice. It became osteomyelitis. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And it was hell to get out of it. It took almost a year. Right. Well, uh, it was very close, and I still could. I'm, I'm talking amputation probably within the next year, maybe. What? Really? No. Yeah, because my heel is falling off right now. How is it? How is it? How how it? How is all of this happening? I don't understand. Well, it's it's almost like cancer, but it's slowly. It, the osteomyelitis usually when you get it. It never goes away. I've got beads in my bone right now that have antibiotics in them that they never took out. But it went, they went in three times to put these antibiotic beads in there and took them out, put new ones in, took them out, put new ones in. And that was after four stints of intravenous antibiotics. Okay, so wait a minute. Let me get this straight. We've just heard what's wrong with your leg and knee, which is not good. Okay, That's the other side. That's my right knee. Oh, that's that's another problem altogether. Yeah, this is my left ankle. Oh, oh, where all really? the screws were. Where all the screws were. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we we have you, okay, with that. <laughs> then we have Phil with his removed prostate. We right. have uh, he's gone right now. Jeff, who has a uh, he has a uh, 
Does he have one of those uh, heart valves? Heart so. valves. Yeah, he's got that uh, that uh, heart thing. Yeah. Yeah, and and then there's uh, there's uh, 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 Patrick, who is really a textbook. Yeah, out of the four of us, we might get one good body. You know, I, I, well, you know something? I suddenly realized you're right. I am the only one here who's completely well. Now, you know, you feel better? What? Uh, I do feel better. God, you are. You line? people are fucking mess. What? Oh, what? How about these? What are those? That's it's his. Pacemaker. Oh, that's that's a paint. Oh, is that a pacemaker? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because they yeah. want to implant some kind of pain thing in my back. Yeah. Dude, okay, so that's a pacemaker. That's a pacemaker. That's, that's legend model. Pretty it's a, good. Yeah, huh? but it's no, it says Amazon on it. What? What is that? It's just one of their one of their house brands. Yeah. So, uh, okay, and what's the other thing? Yeah, and this is an aortic valve. Uh, hold it up. Hold it up a little higher. Hold it up a little higher. Yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, wait a minute. And you had it. You had it mounted. And a, a, what does it say on the uh, on the thing there? It says Bjork Shiley, heart valve. Oh really? Okay, yeah. but that's not one that was in you, or is that one that was in you? No, this is not the exact one that I yeah. had. Yeah. But it's the same. Uh, this is kind of a model that they used to give away as just, as a gift. Keep talking. We just got <laughs> we just got two more people with this talk. You know. See, well, I, you should have had them give you your prostate. I just have numb feet. I had the the kidney stone was the worst thing I've ever been in the hospital with. That's it. You know. So uh, fuck all y'all. I'm uh, I, I I should I should be happy with life, and I'm the most miserable of all of you. So I don't understand this. What's wrong what with I me? Said. That's what I said. Yeah. You know? Yes. Uh, yes, Patrick. I gotta say, the worst thing that I ever had. Yeah. Was a sore on my hip after becoming paralyzed. Yeah. And paralysis was not the worst thing in the world for me. Really? It was a sore that happened because of some ill advice that I got from a, uh, it was either an NP or a PA at the wound clinic where I had, it was just a pea-sized wound and then she gave me some bad advice and it, it ripped it right down to the bone. Wow. And I ended up being on bed rest for a month back wow. in 2010, I think. That was worse than becoming paralyzed because at least with paralysis, I was able to get up into my chair mm -hmm. and go do things. Laying in bed for a month, you may as well put a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger. What? That, Jeez. Well, yeah, so, so take bed, two weeks, you know, laying in bed. Hey, Faye, I want this. Faye, get me that. Faye, my feet feel numb. Can you massage them? It was, uh, it was okay. It, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Um, was, hey, by the way, by the way, folks, we could use some more callers here. Anybody else out there sick or have something wrong with them? Hey, you know, we, we got plenty of uh, cr uh, cripples. What we need is some blind guys and some crazies. Y it, we need, <laughs> yeah. Well, Alex's waiting room. <laughs> No, this is amazing. I stopped to think about it. Everybody here has something, to, you know. Is. We're getting older. If your audience was 18 now? again, you know, 18 to 35, nothing happens, you know, unless they get in a car wreck. Uh, us, we're in the... Uh, well, how you know, do I appeal to the younger people and get rid of you guys and not, not have all this infection and, <laughs> you know... <laughs> And pus. And, and diaper wearing and, you know, heart valving and, you know, all of that. How do, how do I get that audience that only has a problem because last night uh, they could only ejaculate twice instead of three times? Yeah, uh, well, you bought them on Twitter. Yeah, yes. Uh, Patrick? Well, and, and the, the cool thing for me is next Saturday evening I will be going out for my annual steak and lobster because it'll be my anniversary oh, 15 he, years every year paralyzed. every year he on his on his paralytic day <laughs> i guess that's what you would call it uh on, yep. on the dop day, day of paralysis uh he uh he has a, takes himself out for lobster and steak and uh, and celebrates it is it always the same restaurant for the surf and turf uh, delicacy uh, yeah I, I i try to keep it on on the same same deal um, Do you, you guys know, I, have 
uh, a Ruth's Chris uh, where you where you are because they've got a thirty nine dollar lobster and and uh, petite filet mignon. <laughs> it's a really yeah. good deal. <laughs> we we did have one and it it went out it it left so. Oh. Um, now wait a minute, Hi. Phil. What rec- what what restaurant did you just recommend? Ruth's Chris. Yeah, you did pronounce it right. Now hardly anybody ever does. They go Ruth Chris's, but it's Ruth's Chris. Now why is it Ruth's Chris? Well, I do happen to know. Oh, okay. uh, well, tell me because uh, I, I I would li- love to know. There was a very successful restaurant called the Chris Steakhouse, and uh, what happened was this guy would sell it. People would run it into the ground, and then he would buy it back. And he did this several times until uh, Ruth, and I forgot her last name, bought it yeah. and called it Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, and she's turned it into the mammoth chain that it is today. Oh, really? Oh, okay, fine. That's yeah. great. But uh, I don't remember her last name. But, uh, you know, it, it's one place where you can get a meal that's consistent anywhere in the world. And uh, and it's good. Really, I've never been there. No, the steak is got a lot of butter, which I like. Yeah, uh, well, and you would too, being on Atkins. Yeah, uh, and they serve it. It comes out five hundred degrees, and it's sizzling, and Fizzle. it's just delicious. That's really good. Really, yeah. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm still on my diet, and I'm still low doing low carbs, right? And I still well, can't lose weight. All of a sudden, yeah. I've hit this plateau, this just, you know. Now, maybe when the weather gets better and I can go out and take some walks and stuff, you know, I'll, I'll improve, but, you know. But then again, I've got my, I've got a, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, a torn meniscus. Is it, does that count at all for this? this uh, yeah, a little, yeah, semi. Yeah. Hey, you know, why don't you go on Amazon and get one of those uh, stair, not stair stepper, it's the uh, the, the slider one yeah. that we, we have. Well, it's almost like a cross country thing. Yeah. It doesn't put any stress on your knees, and it and it gets your heart rate up. Really, and, uh, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, sure. Like I want to exercise. You know, every uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Jerking off gets your heart rate up too. Y- yeah, that does that does help. It, it gets you gotta your have heart rate. desire. Huh? <laughs> you gotta have desire. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, um, my wife uh, gets up at least. I know every Saturday and Sunday. She's up at like four thirty, five o'clock, and goes to the gym. Wow. She works out. She's constantly been working out, and occasionally once during the week we'll go to the gym as well. And and she keeps saying, "Well, you know, you would lose more weight if you went to the gym because I belong to a gym down the street." Uh, it's yeah, just, I, it's just I've never been there. Uh, it cost me fifteen bucks a month, and I don't have the incentive to go down there. It's a good place to go if you have to pee and you're out on the street yeah, and you yeah. don't go back up to the eighth floor. Well, I may start going there and just, <laughs> you know, doing uh, doing uh, some uh, some treadmill stuff or something, you know, yeah, once, once, the weather, on. once the weather's better. It's a block and a half away. It's right next to my pharmacy, by the way, which is convenient. And um, uh, it's a block and a half away, so I'll take a cab there and then I'll go in and work out. Yes, Patrick. I was going to say, why don't you go on, on like a treadmill? I mean, I run daily in my chair, and I do uh, weights daily. Yes. Now, I haven't run in a month because I've got a, a sore on my heel that I've got to make sure heals up um, that I got from, from stupid shit. But um, running for me every day, um, and then I'll take one day off. So I'll run like six days a week. Weights are every day. Treadmill would be perfect for you. And you'd only yes. have to do it two or three times a week just to get your heart rate up. And, you know, I mean, if you, you're bored walking in Central Park, walk on, I mean, the treadmill, they got television sets on them. And you yep. can watch fucking television or the news oh, I or know whatever, you yeah. know, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about you, Patrick. What you what you should do is take a picture of yourself in the wheelchair, and, and with a inscription below it, just put it on Facebook because it'll go viral. That says, "This is what happens to you if you don't floss." <laughs> 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 yeah. 
and that's my, that's my joke for tonight. So you know. Um, be, well, I, I do warn people. Um, I've I've told um, some of my older relative uh, nephews and that that if you masturbate too much, mm -hmm. this is what happens. Have to wear glasses. Well, wheelchair, <laughs> so you know, throw your back out. Well, you remember the old joke about can I just keep doing it till I need glasses? Yeah, well, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Um, but. I got glasses at ten, so <laughs> you're an early bloomer. I've often wanted to go up to blind people and say to them, "Masturbation, right?" <laughs> <laughs> hey. You know, that's no different than me wanting to pull down those pants on those guys that wear them around their tuchus, you know. Why do you want to do that? Are you, are you gay? De-pants de de them, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. it's, uh, let, it's people, let, let people have their fashion, Phil. I mean, when that's, I, believe me, uh, when I was younger, I, I went with certain, there were, there were certain fashions that I was forced into. Zoot now, suits? You, no. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, uh. And I'll tell you what they were. Do you remember the shoes that came out with the, the the thick heels, the high heels for guys? Yes, the boots, platform shoes. Platform shoes for guys. Mm -hmm. uh, to begin with, I'm not a short guy, so I don't need them. All right? But I'd go into every shoe store, and you couldn't buy anything else but those platform shoes. So that I was forced to. like to, I was, 74. I was forced to wear them, even though I couldn't stand them. You know? Yeah. That, that that had to be 1974 Around because there. I I went because to, by 1975 they were out of style. But right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I went to this. Uh, I, I went to London and I went shopping on Carnaby Street. Yeah, and I bought the stupidest looking clothes, platform shoes. But nobody had seen platform shoes in New York uh, at the time I got them in London. They were fashionable there, and they hadn't did, did really. You, hit. Did you own a Nehru jacket? Uh, yes, but that was before uh, I had the Nehru jacket. I had elephant bells. Um, I had two Nehru jackets. One was yeah. blue, and the other one was lime green. Ooh. Ooh. You must have had to beat the women off with that one. No, I had to beat people off from trying to beat me up wearing that thing. <laughs> but I found that with at least one of the Nehru jackets, the blue one, if I wore it open, nobody saw it as a Nehru jacket. So they were very fashionable. So you could wear it kind of nicely, you know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I could I could stand to have it. I'd like. Uh, can you buy a Nehru jacket anymore? Can I? Is there like Bob's House of Nehru jackets or something somewhere? Uh, you know, I bet yeah, you Goodwill. Those, uh, yeah, you, not Goodwill. <laughs> might be too old for Goodwill, but I bet you those vintage clothing stores. Yeah. You know, uh, period ones. They, they'd probably be able to get them there. Yeah, I'd like to get myself a Nehru jacket because I know it would drive girlfriend crazy. You know, with plaid pants and a white belt and white shoes. Well, nah, that that that's that's Florida. That you got to get the leisure suit. I never bought a leisure suit in my fucking life. <laughs> Why not? Why you not? Because I'm just not a fashionable suits. person. Okay. Yeah, you never had one of those one piece. Uh, uh, you know, it looks like you're supposed to work underneath an automobile, but they're for dress. <laughs> something, something like that. I think it was. So uh, I'm, I'm just uh, boy. I've got. I just got uh, the allergies are just acting up tonight. Excuse me, folks. But what changed? Uh, did the weather all of a sudden? I, I don't know. I, you know something. I get this burning thing uh, in the eyes, and I don't know if it's something outside with pollen or whether it's something in this old building. Like mold or something. Uh, you know? Yeah, probably the asbestos. Didn't you say your tear ducts clog up? No, they 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 tear like crazy. Oh, but mm. uh, that is a symptom of dry eye. But it's also allergy because I can tell it's the allergy too because I'm blowing my nose. You know. Well, it, you know? I thought of one other reason. There could be some deteriorating bodies in the walls. You said you had very thick walls, and uh, you know maybe over the hundred years, there's a number of bodies in there that have been sealed up, and yeah, now they're could, starting could to deteriorate. Be. No, but I, I, it, you know, this is such an old building. Built by the mob. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't think there's an asbestos problem here because I don't think they were using asbestos when the building was built. Well, okay. just looking uh, around. I don't see anything that would be asbestos. You have uh, now maybe down in the basement. 
yeah. the pipes might be wrapped with asbestos, the steam pipes. Yeah. But uh, if you've just got a regular radiator uh, and there's no wrapping around no, it, there's no, no. asbestos. Uh, no, there's there. a little wrapping around some pipes here, but that's about it. Uh, uh, what, well, it's probably painted over. And if it's painted over, no, it's, not, it's, it's, not paint, still, it's not painted over. It's it's a uh, uh, where is it? I don't even know where it is. One room. There's, it's nothing. It, I, I there's not asbestos here. I'll tell you something. You you pound on these walls. It, yeah. There's you don't you don't hear any hollowness in these wow. walls. Sure. I mean wow. this thing was this thing was built to last. Yeah. You know. Um, but that's the shame of what they've done with a lot of these apartments is they they've they have put in hollow walls, you know, yeah. and, and torn down the, 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 the concrete ones. And it's terrible. It's just terrible. Now, yeah, the, the worst that you could have is maybe some lead paint. And, uh, and as long as you're not sanding it, disturbing it, it's not eating well, it. Well, I'll not tell you what, it, what we do have. If I were to go and uh, some of these rooms, I can't even close the doors on the closets, some of them, because the, the paint is so thick on there. And it's been there for 118 years. Wow. And uh, if I were to, like, get one of these heat things and kind of start stripping the paint, oh, I would yeah. see all the layers. It would be like like the rings on a tree. You know? Yeah. There, there are proper ways to remove that stuff and not uh, get yourself sick. Oh, or I know. Well, I, I, if, I, if, I, if we could get some money, uh, I would uh, restore this apartment in a lot of ways. And what I would do in the bedroom is I would remove all the paint that had been painted over those closets. You know? Yeah. They're probably beautiful wood underneath. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, but it, what happened was, is as the years went on, people came in, they just painted over the wood, which was yeah. terrible. And I still have all the wood in the dining room and wood in the, uh, in the living room, but uh, the rest of the place, it's all, you know, painted up so and stuff. Probably looks the same as uh, what you've got there, except yeah. it's underneath everything. Um, so uh, I expect that uh, that as the weather gets a little nicer, you ought to be going out with your uh, your video equipment and, mm -hmm. and take some uh, movies. So I know you like to do those. I mean, oh, I had one other idea for you, Alex. Have you ever heard of something called a negative ion generator? I've heard uh, of that. Yeah. Yes, uh, you could get room size ones that you could put in uh, this room. Obviously, you spend a lot of time in. Uh, it, you could. Uh, they're basically air air cleaners, and what they do is they filter the air with negative ions, mm -hmm. and uh, out comes the clean, and in goes the dirty. Um, uh, I bought one at uh, Sharper Image. There, you know, there's no more Sharper Image, but I think you can get them at Brookstone and mm -hmm. probably online, uh, but. Basically, it's an air cleaner, room I, size. You I put think, it in the room, and that might make the there's difference. There's some question as to whether they work. They uh, yeah, well, you have one. Does it work for you, yeah, that, Kevin? Or, what, well, apparently it doesn't because you don't have it plugged in. Is that a uh, fan? This one's dirty. I haven't cleaned it. I got one plugged in downstairs. Yeah, and what do you think of them? <clears throat> it seems to work, I guess. You know, yeah. I don't... I mean, it can't well, hurt. That, that's a ringing endorsement. You know... It, it, the problem is I got it in a big room, so I can't tell one way or the other. I got two cats, and it seems to help. You know what I always wanted to do was, like in this room, put in a dehumidifier. Yeah. And then on the other end of the room, put in a humidifier. Well, it's sometime and in the then winter. And just sit here and see what happens. We start raining in the middle of the room or something, you know. <laughs> two fronts. Start a uh, rainforest. Yeah. Uh, you know, if uh, you may be experiencing low humidity also. And so if you had a humidifier in there in the winter, that might make the difference. Maybe it just dried out. Yeah, but from... I'm not going to go out and buy all this equipment on the possibility that it will help my <laughs> eyes not to itch, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> They're uh, not expensive. Or, or, or once I buy them and it doesn't work, can I send you the bill and will you reimburse just me? buy it for on all Amazon your wonderful send it advice. Back. But you don't or want me to. You don't want me to shop at Amazon because they're ripping off the post office, according to That's you, true. and they're putting the small businessman out of out of work. So take it, get it at Costco, buy it at Costco online, have them deliver it to your house, so you don't have to schlep. Uh, I just bought a sofa. I mean, uh, you do you do realize that the other thing that Amazon has done is made my my body atrophy. 
because I used to go to Best Buy to buy stuff, and I used to go across town to get this thing or over there to get that thing. Now I just order on Amazon and wait for it to come to my front door, and I just yeah. sit here like a slug. Yeah, well, uh, it's like uh, Marjorie was saying about the Wally movie, uh. you know. <laughs> Wally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I would think maybe a, a humidifier and a uh, room uh, negative ion generator. They, they It's like an air cleaner. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and for kicks, I should get my prostate removed. Yeah. What do well, I need it for? That you don't want. But uh, that might make all the difference if this room is... Uh, I should, it just amazed me. I've got to say this again, folks. It just amazes me that, that they have not come up with the technology to, you know, that the, when, once they pull out the prostate, they put something else in there so that Phil doesn't go around peeing his pants all the time. You know? Yeah. I mean, w you would think with all the science, but the, it, to me, urology is such a klutzy business. They haven't come out with any sophisticated forms of, of this thing. They've been doing the same operation for the last 50 years, right? Am I right, Jeff? There's this machine called a Da Vinci. A da, Vin, da Vinci. Uh, well, did you use Da Vinci? Yeah, yeah, that's what they used. That's, and, uh, or at least I, they showed me the Da Vinci, and then they wheeled me in, and they used a crowbar. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they shoved Geyser. a vacuum cleaner nozzle up your ass. Yeah, I, I would have had to pay extra for that. Yeah. <laughs> One of the uh, inventors of Da Vinci yeah. sold his company, I think after the first 10 years or something, even less. Well, now the Da Vinci patents are all active or, you know, they're, 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 they're old enough that anybody else can start using it. Mm -hmm. And now there's going to be like five different six different companies hmm. who are going to compete at this point with all little bit improvements and stuff like that. Yeah, I think mine was designed by Leonardo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they said yours was really big, huh? 135 milligrams? I mean, how does that compare to an average prostate? Average normal prostate, 30 milligrams. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, how many milligrams are in an ounce? You know, I have no idea, and I don't care because I don't want to be able to completely understand how big or small your prostate was. Uh, yeah. I don't have my cell phone. Normally, no. it's the size of a walnut. Fine, grapefruit. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk to all the young people who might be listening to us this evening and hearing this. And I don't know why we have so many people viewing it right now because nothing much is happening. It's not like Phil is showing us his prostate. Uh, uh, it, See, it, but but <laughs> what happens, kids? If you're listening to us, as you get older, the conversation <laughs> you would normally have at dinner goes away from, "Have you gotten laid recently?" Yeah. to well, I went to see my doctor and, or how much are you paying for Xanax? Or, uh, boy, I uh, found this doctor. Uh, it, it always, I, when, if, when we go out with our older friends who are like in their 70s, okay, am I right, Jeff? The discussion Absolutely. invariably yeah. goes to medicine. You yeah, know? if I, I went to school in Miami, and I, you know, I worked as a security guard when I was going to school and a couple of other things. And you'd see all of these retired people down there yeah. uh, on the shuffleboard and talking about their operations. And I used to think, oh, my God, you know, the, what a conversation. What, what, what are these people? My scar is bigger than your scar. You know, now I understand, uh, you know, and well, if I would have been smart enough and learned then that maybe I should have taken better care of myself. Uh, I would have been in better shape. When you were younger and you go out with the younger people, what was the discussion at dinner? Boy, did I get a great blowjob last night, you know? And got now, any coke? And, <laughs> and, and now it's, I, I swear to you, I've come up with this one myself. Boy, this new pharmaceutical plan we've got is saving me two-thirds of what I was paying. Well, that that's the the just the the most happy moment of my life lately. Yes, Patrick. 
Well, I had um, a couple of weeks ago two of my uh, buddies over, and one of them is 49, mm -hmm. and the other one is my age, uh, 42. Mm -hmm. And um, the intent was we were going to watch a movie. So they, they came over at like 7 o'clock, and we ordered food, and we never got to the movie until like 10 o'clock because for those first three hours, we were discussing health issues. Um, my one buddy had some uh, lesions removed from his back and off of like the side of his neck. And another one had some precancer or, um, you know, some, um, what do you call it? Uh, and, uh, yeah. And, and so we're just talking about that, and I was laughing, and I said to them, you realize none of us have reached 50 yet. I, You know, my one buddy near 50, wow. but... So then we were talking about drugs, and not recreational, but, you know, what what are you taking for this, you know? So it it invaded my group of friends, too, in their 40s and, and near 50, so... It doesn't wow. get any better. It's, 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 <laughs> that's where it all starts, yeah. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is kids who are listening to us, and by the way, the numbers are real good now. I'll keep this up with all this talk. Um, the um, <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, kids, this is what's going to happen to you. You don't think it's going to happen to you. I didn't think it was going to happen to me, but now I find it is. Okay. And I also find there are several things that you have to get used to as you get old. To begin with, you never get out of a chair without making a sound. Okay. <laughs> Every time you get up out of a chair, you go, <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, invariably. The other day I was getting up out of bed and I went, I grunted and I said, can I get out of bed without grunting? Why do I grunt every time I get out of a chair or out of a bed? Am I right, Patrick? And, um, and it's going to happen to every one of you. It happens to you. say, oh, well, that happens to my grandfather. Wait till you get to be your grandfather's <laughs> age if you're that lucky. You right. do this all the time too, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, the kids get off my lawn thing is another thing altogether. All right. You know. Just you wait. Yeah. I I get mad at people on the street in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning who are yelling and screaming on my street corner. Yeah. And yeah. don't think there's anybody living in this big, huge building that they're standing they in. No consideration. Yeah. Uh, where I'm at, there's like four condominiums uh the one across the street has a uh, 120 units in the building yeah four stories high and uh it, it seems to have a lot of young owners and they're always getting home at 2 30 in the morning drunk some argue some don't uh you know there's uh, the occasional pushing match mm -hmm. uh, so I, I look right out at it and uh no one has any consideration for anyone anymore well, I mean, it's, you know, but that's because you're older. Everybody else is very considerate if you're younger, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, your, yeah. it's the you kids get off of my lawn symptom. Uh, so, oh, here, come, here comes Tim. I wonder, is, does Tim have anything wrong with him? He has a conspiracy. Uh, or, uh, let, me ask, let me ask him here. Uh, hold on a second. Wait till he ca catches on. There we go. Tim, are you there? Tim? No, Tim is not there. Someone. It's a conspiracy. They've taken yeah, the Russians got into his line. Yeah, the Russians got into his line. Right. You know, all hey, this, what's this stuff about the kid hog going after McCain? Claiming uh, McCain is the largest recipient of NRA money uh, in the country. Uh, and, I didn't hear anything like that. Yeah, it's uh, David Hogg goes after McCain. Uh, let's see. Who, who is. Okay. Uh, why do you take so much money from the NRA? And, uh, well, I mean, it's a good question to ask if you're someone who doesn't want to see, uh, wants to see some gun legislation happening and you've got a bunch of people who are taking money from the NRA, it's a, it's a, it's a legitimate question to ask. It's not being cruel or anything like that. It's not like, well, Laura Ingram, let's talk about Laura Ingram for a second. All right. Has lost what up five advertisers now, six, more than that. Up to eight now. Up to eight. Up to eight. eight. I think she's going to be out at Fox pretty soon. I mean, that was... Well, you know, maybe they needed to sell more time, and now there's an open book for those spots, and uh, they can take on some more advertising. Yeah, but they'll have to sell them at cheaper rates. Not if they sell them to the NRA. Huh? 
<laughs> Not if you sell it to the NRA. All right. I didn't stop to think about that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Patrick. One thing that, that has really annoyed me about, especially Hog versus these other kids, is now with the Laura Ingram thing, you know, if you want to act like the adult and you want to play in the adult arena mm -hmm. and you want to be the grown up, you're going to get criticized. And it's the same as the kids of a president. If you're, if they put themselves in a situation mm -hmm. where it's political, they should be open season. If they yeah. don't, you leave them alone. And this kid yeah. is putting himself out there. And, you know, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, to... yeah. I don't disagree with you on that, particularly. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I think this hog kid is very articulate. Uh, Marjorie, when she first saw him, said he's going to grow up and be a politician. You know, yeah, unless uh, he makes a mistake. Well, wait, no, wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let me finish what I'm saying. Let me get my thought across here. But what I've found about him is I think he's getting a little full of himself. You know, it's like all of a sudden there is the spotlight on you. And I've got to tell you, the spotlight is very addictive. Mm -hmm. And once it's shown on you, you become very addicted to it. And I think he's become addicted to it. And I, I think that he's a little, a little full of himself. Now, what he's saying is valuable. And he's very articulate and all of that. Uh, I would agree with you up to a point about the Laura Ingram thing, except that she, she went after him griping about the fact uh, that he supposedly was crying about not being able to get into various schools. And that wasn't what he was doing at all. I heard the show he did it on. He was just, he, they called him and he said, yeah, they didn't, you know, so I'll apply to other schools. Uh, <clears throat> so what she did was kind of wrong in that she she was just misinformed, uh, yeah, she, but she, she did apologized. she did apologize, and I'm not here to defend her, but she did apologize, you know. So and my response to the whole thing would be tough shit. Once again, you're playing a grown up, so act like a grown up and and take the criticism. But, I mean, if you can't if you can't take the criticism. Then take yourself out of the spotlight. Well, and, I, I, you, know, I, 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 you know what I I think I think what he should have done was just ignore it. By the way, Tim's trying to call, but every time I try to put Tim on, uh, he I can't get him on the air. So, uh, you know, I want. Uh, what's this headline? Stephen Colbert apologizes to Trump. Uh, yeah. Is that is that a fake news item? It could be. No, it's, it's, it's satirical. Oh. Um, it, it, he did apologize to Trump because apparently uh, Dana Carvey was on the show and was playing some character, and CNN mistakenly said, look who was on SNL, and uh, Colbert said, you know, fake news, fake news, CNN got it wrong, I agree with the president, I apologize for criticizing him because... CNN and fake news, and all CNN did was Make assume because Dana Carvey were there, yeah. it would yeah. ask. So, so. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Tim has joined us. Uh, Tim, what's your conspiracy of the night? Good evening. Yes, what is your conspiracy of the night? Let's get it out of the way. Oh, are you ready? Yeah. 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 Well, I, when I was in college, I was part of an environmental group. Yeah. And we had strip mining that ruined the land. We got a law passed anyway. We had professors from the schools in Ohio that helped us, and their jobs were threatened when they helped us because they get grants from the – Coke Industries gives a lot of grants uh -huh. to universities. Yeah. Uh, I think he's so outspoken. Some universities may not want him because it could threaten government job money coming in for grants. Nah. And scholarships and also corporate, corporate no, money because they – that's what operates the university is all that money coming in. Uh, uh, Phil, do not poo-poo Tim's – uh, no, I would think the conspiracy theory of the night. He has a right. He just he gives out. The, yeah, well, so I, I think I, the universities would want a kid that is this outspoken, that is this unique. That's what universities want. Well, that uh, was true back in the seventies, Phil. Yes, but it, now they depend on grants 
and big corporate donations. Yeah, I don't think any of that, I don't, university. But I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think it was just that the the grade point his grade point average is like a four point five. I think four point one. Four point one, 4. and 1. I think yeah. they they want a four point five. There's so many people trying to get into that That's school. Perfect. Well, I, yeah. I just say that because I had a per personal experience with it. I had a professor that had to quit helping us. Because they were going to take, but, he was not going to earn tenure. But, but so. I mean, Hogg, to his credit, said to TMZ when he was being interviewed, he said, "But you know, I don't care. I'm, I'll apply to a lot of other schools." You know, he says, right. "I right now I'm too busy out trying to save the world." I think he said kind of satirically. He's, he said, "He's by better off to not yeah. go to school." Well, I mean, but uh, there is a certain. Uh, I think he's getting a little full of himself because I think the spotlight is is. Uh, uh, affecting him. I think a lot of the other kids are handling it, shall we say, better, you know? Yeah, of course, he was the editor of the newspaper, so he kind of... Yeah. Uh, Patrick? He's got... He's addicted. Patrick? Yeah, I was uh, going to say earlier, the uh, short-haired uh, girl, uh, she, she out front, she got her mouth going. Go ahead, you can, you can, and, you can, and, you, and you can say you think she's hot. No, 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 no. No, not that. Her haircut's a little too short. Uh, I, I, hair, I, I like hair that short. I and like she hair. She's got O'Connor. I like uh, hair that short. Plus, yeah. plus I, yeah, I, I, find her, I, I find her to have a certain sex appeal because she is so outspoken and does it so well. You know, she's yeah, very genuine. She, look. She what? Che Guevara look with short hair. You know. Che Guevara didn't have that kind of haircut. No, with short hair. He had long curly hair, but you know she has that look, that that uh, uh, revolutionary look. You know, the, a revolutionary Cuba. Good for her. You know, I think she's adorable. Uh, well, w one one more thing to get you back to medical. Yeah. Seems that Arnold Schwarzenegger underwent yes, emergency heart surgery yeah. today. Yeah. What happened is he went in to have a valve replaced, I think it was. Uh, I don't know if you heard this story, uh, Jeff, but it might be of interest to no. you. Went in for a valve replacement, and when they got in there, they found that they couldn't remove the valve that easily, and so they had to go in and do open-heart surgery on him. Wow. And so he had open-heart surgery. So now he's you know, he's a member of the Zipper Club. Join uh, yeah. the club. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'm sh he had a heart problem a while. Uh, what was it when he was? Yeah, it was back in the '90s when he was doing Batman, Mr. Really? Freeze. Yeah, he went in and had uh, a heart va a valve put in or something like that, and it oh. didn't. And it, they they said it wouldn't last forever, and that it was maybe time for them to go in and replace it. And they went in and they found they had to do a whole open heart thing. So, but he's fine yeah. supposedly and he'll be okay. What what do you know about that this, Jeff? About this sort that of happened thing? to me. Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Jeff Jeff knows about this a lot. What? Well, I, I was going to tell you if if it was like fifteen years ago. Yeah. Since he had that last valve. Yeah. Uh, and it was a porcine valve or a pig yeah. valve. Yeah. Uh, they don't last forever. Right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> they probably. Uh, in uh, doing a little bit of studies, they said, eh, I think we better open you up and, and uh, put a new one in. Yeah. Tim said it happened to him. Yeah. 2005. I went in for a stent, and they woke me up from an anesthetic just long enough to say, we're going to cut you open, see you in a couple of days. So I didn't have any time to think about it. Yeah. They just kept me. Yeah. Well, so, uh, it, it takes a lot out of you. Oh, so oh, you've yeah. got something uh, wrong with you, the too. The open heart surgery is, uh, it really knocks the shit out of you. But uh, uh, since I've had surgery on valves, on the same valve, uh, I've had three of those. And uh, uh, there's actually two valves, one on top of the other uh, in, the, in my heart. And they're putting them in now through a catheter. Uh, through my th throat, and uh, those are great because you you feel you can go home the next day. Wow! Wow! What a wonderful world. Well, mm -hmm. so now, so so Tim has not broken the rule of tonight's show, which seems to be people who have something altered in them or some major oh. 
surgical None problem. None of us are going to have to worry about this uh, after this weekend because the Chinese have a satellite that is plummeting towards Earth, and oh, they yeah. don't know where it's going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> so well, Michigan's in, in part of the path. It's oh, a really? possibility that could oh. fly over Michigan. That could be an improvement. <laughs> Possibly. Gee, I was hoping for Miami. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's amazing. You know, these things come back. They're out of control. Not like uh, Elon Musk's uh, uh, rockets, huh? What, what, how did the latest one go? Well, no, I'm talking about the two that landed back down on the oh, pad. Oh, no, that's great. That was that was spectacular. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, uh, and he sent one up the other day, and it's part, oh, of, part of the mission to Mars thing that they're working on. Wow. If, You'll get to if, Mar- if the device uh, is from China and it, and it lands in Michigan, yeah. we can sell the steel and, yeah. and the aluminum. Back to the Chinese, but there'll That's, be a tariff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, you know, I know, you know, you know, Elon Musk was sending back up to Mars the keys for that Tesla. For the Tesla, yeah. No, uh, the, uh, I'll tell you something. Um, well, he won't be alive to see them, I think, get to Mars. Although he might. He might. Older guy, you know, isn't he? He's, he's in his he's, 50s. He's claiming he wants to try and do it within the next 10 years. But it's mm-hmm. at least a two-year trip to Mars is the problem. That's the biggest problem. Imagine how many airline miles you get for that? A lot. A lot. <laughs> no, because I and see, I know this. I was, I was like a geek about this, right? The Earth is, at its average, 93 million miles from the sun. Right. Mars is 144 million. From the sun. But how sun. far is it from us? So, well, the difference between 93 and 144, uh-huh. which would be uh, 44 plus 7 is, uh, you know, 51 million miles is the, is right. the, is the difference. And uh, I want to change the oil 72 times. Huh? Yeah. I'd have to change my oil 72 times. Yeah. And right. I think, uh, let's see here. I think, Ven- what was Venus? Was Venus like 43 million miles from the sun? And, and of course, uh, Mercury is the closest to the sun. It's about 28 million miles from the sun. Hmm. It gets very hot there. Very hot yeah. there. And uh, then, uh, let's see, Jupiter? Well, how, but I used to know all of them. I used to have, uh, I used to know all, all the distances. But I do remember Mars at 144th million now that's there's an apogee and there's a perigee how close and how far away you are and those vary but the average is 144 the moon is 239,000 miles away around the corner at its at its average yeah 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 how come they don't have a holiday in there yet why do I? Why did I ever m- remember these things? I guess because I was so into astronomy at the time that these were figures that were you know meaningful to me and when you it's talk, when teachers you, remember it. Yeah, two hundred thirty-nine thousand miles is not very far in comparison no. to all the other places. I remember in history they said you know, when was the War of eighteen twelve, and so uh, I I got it wrong. You know, you got it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I I really uh, you know I I have uh, I really was into astronomy. That was my big my big deal. I have, to, have you heard have, have you heard the latest news on astronomy? They just found a galaxy that has no dark energy. Really? Or dark matter. So now they got to rewrite the whole way they explain, you know, from quantum mechanics on up. Because it so doesn't match any of the theories. If it has no dark energy, the Reverend Al Sharpton is going to be very upset. Yeah. No, that's, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. Dark energy matters. The dark yeah. energy matters, yes. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. What what is dark energy exactly? Well, if you if you do all the calculations based on the, all the formulas we have, yeah, there's other there's something out there that we can't see that's affecting the movement of all the stars. Oh, I see. Okay, that's not, in other words, it's it's dark matter. It's kind of invisible. Is that the it's, stuff? It's that's invisible to off? us, but we we can only see in four dimensions. So it could be in another dimension. They or it could be the string theory. There's there, there's something, but the, the, the uh, the current theory, though, is there's dark energy, a lot of dark energy, not a lot of dark matter, uh, and it affects well, how everything moves, and it's pretty consistent through well, the universe. The they st- found a galaxy st- where it doesn't exist. The string, theor- the string theory goes along with uh, uh, quantum mechanics and so on, which seems to say that there are 
upwards to 12 other dimensions beyond ours that there are the repeated, like there are, say, 12 mm -hmm. Earths out there. And on those 12 Earths are all of us. But uh, you know, I, can, I, can I, I can explain a different dimension real quick for you. Is it dolphins or sharks that have a sixth and a seventh and eighth sense? They can sense magnetism. And I they can sense that's vibrations that's not sound. They can sense bodies, vibrations that don't aren't necessarily sound. So they have other senses that we don't have. Yeah, well, I have a sense that none uh, that a lot of you don't have. I have, I can, I can uh, sense bullshit. It's uh, well, dolphins do have. Uh, that's why they use them uh, in these. Um, well, they use a, they use a version of sonar. Yeah, but they actually. Oh. Uh, in World War II, didn't they use dolphins and in, uh, in torpedoes, or had something to do with torpedoes? No, I, actually, they, they 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 looked into ways they could use uh, uh, dolphins, but because did, dolphins what actually I, what, can they can teach them syntax. My favorite word. My, my, fa th my favorite thing about dolphins was in uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, mm -hmm. uh, to the Galaxy. Uh, uh, dolphins turned out to be the second smartest creature on earth humans not being the first but being the second and at one point they sense that the world is coming to an end so they all leave the earth and just fly up in the air and leave and all they left behind was a note so long and thanks for all the fish <laughs> that's which that's another book isn't it yeah yeah thanks for all the fish yeah so long and thanks for all the fish um well the, i wonder where uh the physicist that died is, is, is that uh, now? Stephen Hawking? Stephen, yeah. Stephen Hawking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made some weird predictions recently. Uh, like about where he was going to be when he died? Oh, no, about, what, about the future of humankind yeah. on this planet. So, Well, I, I, I think at the rate we're going, we're not going to be around as long as we should be. Well, some yeah. people are saying 100 to 200 years. Yeah, I think you know, that I think that we uh, we have treated our our home very badly, and Earth Earth is 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 stronger than we are, and it will survive no matter what we do to it, even if it has to wipe us all out and start all over again. And the very you see that, huh, what did you see that documentary on the plastic in the ocean and oh, how the oh, sea that, life? Oh, it, oh, it's horrible. It is horrible. Yeah, they no, say they say cut bellies open and they're no, full of. They plastic. say that the plastic uh, sphere out there is twice the size of Texas. Twice the size of Texas. Plastic in the Pacific. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and like they show or something is supposed to. Yeah, they they show bits of it. How sharks and so forth have have bitten it and. And, and eating it, and that, uh, you know, I'm going to be diving with tiger sharks next year, and uh, uh, out in no cage. And the uh, the thing is, tiger sharks will eat anything. They eat uh, license plates. It's amazing what they find in their stomachs. Yeah. But uh, the, the plastic yeah. is, is just killing these things. Yeah. Well, there's also nano pieces of plastic in anything that's packed in plastic, like water and juices. Is from the processing, there's yeah. tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces of plastic. Yeah. Is that, that, is that the chemical in the plastic bottles that once the plastic is exposed to the sun, it releases? Well, I, I uh, my, uh, my old friend, no longer my friend because he never calls me and never talks to me, David Feldman used to have a line which I loved. He said, plastic is biodegradable. It's just you're too anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I found the two senses that sharks have. Electroreception, which is electromagnetic forces, and lateral line. It's in Wikipedia. So, oh, okay, good. Which we don't have. Yes. That's, so that's interesting. Hey, listen, thank you so much, Kevin. Always love having you here. Don't lose that leg too soon, okay? You know, uh, we already, and, and Phil, you're on the men. That's good. Tim, great to hear from you again tonight. Jeff Stein. Hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, happy Pesach. And the same happy Pesach to you, Patrick, even though I know you're not Jewish, okay? All right. Uh, why don't you all wave goodbye to everybody so they can, uh, they can wave back. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizens panel for Friday. Uh, and uh, 
We thank them for calling, and, uh, uh, you know, you can be part of the Citizen Panel, too. So next time we do it, which will be on Tuesday, you should think about giving us a call, okay? Uh, coming up next, the intersection with Jack and Amy. After that, uh, uh, will be at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the uh, show Connections, which comes to us out of Florida. And then uh, we will be back here on Tuesday, starting off with the batting order with uh, Damian Chaplin and the Exchange, quickly followed by, yes, uh, uh, me. Uh, same time, same station in life. I'll see you then. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.